If you're struggling with melting accordion implants, ammonia spikes, and an immature filter despite how patient you've been, have I got the solution for you. The aquarium dark start method is a widely accepted solution that essentially provides an insurance policy against ammonia-based plant melt and an underdeveloped filter cycle. It gives you predictable results and minimizes plant melt risk with the only expense being your patience. In this video, I'll break down the dark start method, teach you how to do it, and answer the most frequently asked questions about it. So if you find my no BS guides helpful, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell, helps get the videos out to a wider audience. All right, let's get into it. So why use the dark start method? The dark start method is all about removing instability and toxins from your aquarium before plants or animals are ever involved. It's primarily geared toward a system using active soil, though you can also do it with an inert substrate. Firstly, it allows aquasoil to leach its initial ammonia without melting your plants. While all aquarium plants can melt, tissue culture plants can be especially sensitive to ammonia. New soil dumps ammonia early, and that's typically the biggest cause of melting plants in a new aquarium. And for a second side benefit, the dark start method allows for the filter to cycle. With ammonia present in the system and water moving, beneficial bacteria begin colonizing the filter media and substrate well before planting day. So by the time you are ready to plant and ultimately add fish, shrimp, and snails, you've got a nice stable bacterial colony ready to metabolize any extra ammonia. And the third benefit is if you're using driftwood in your aquascape, the dark start method provides a window to leach those tannins if you don't want them in your system. Though I do want to note tannins are not harmful. This is purely an aesthetic preference. And the fourth benefit is keeping the lights off during this ammonia leaching and cycling phase dramatically reduces early algae pressure. This is usually what turns beginners off from the hobby. No light means you're not feeding algae during the most unstable phase of a new setup, so you're minimizing any sort of risk. So to sum up, the big takeaway is nice and simple. You're stabilizing the aquarium system before you introduce any light and there's zero risk of algae since the lights are not on. So what's the disadvantage? Well, there's really only one downside and that's time and patience. A lot of new aquarium hobbyists wanna do everything on day one. So this method does require some discipline and restraint. You're trading speed for stability. Now here's how to properly run a dark start step-by-step. Step. step one, build your hardscape and substrate system, finalize it, and then flood the tank. If you typically add root tabs in your soil like I do, I would delay this step until planting day a few weeks out since those nutrients won't be feeding anything. If you're using tap water and your water has chlorine, dechlorinate as usual. If you're using RO, there's no need to remineralize until planting day. Step two, install and run full filtration. As per usual, you're gonna wanna make sure there's ample biological filter media in your filter for the bacteria to colonize. You're also welcome to use pre-cycled filter media if you have it available to you. Step three, turn the lights completely off. You don't want any photo period, no ramping, just completely off day and night. Step four, wait. Most folks run the dark start method from about two to four weeks. During this time, the ammonia leaches from the soil, bacteria establish in your filter media as well as the substrate, and tannins release if you're using wood. Water changes during this process are completely optional. They're not necessary. In my tank right here, I'm doing one a week to drain the tannins that have leached from the Malaysian driftwood. While not mandatory, feel free to add a reliable beneficial bacteria source to jumpstart the cycle and add a little bit of extra insurance. Step five, after the two to four weeks are up, add your root tabs to the soil, plant the tank as you normally would, remineralize the water, turn on your CO2 system if you're using one, and turn the lights on. And the rest of the process is standard. If you haven't done any water changes yet, I would just do one heavy one the week of planting or right before you plant. But the daily water changes that are often recommended with an aqua soil tank are not necessary. And now for the frequently asked questions. Do I really need to dechlorinate the water? Yes, chlorine kills beneficial bacteria. Dechlorination is mandatory if your tap water contains chlorine or chloramines. Shouldn't I add minerals or remineralize my RO water though? No, there are no plants or livestock in the tank. Bacteria don't need those minerals, so mineral levels don't matter at all during a dark start, but they also won't hurt. Is ambient room light okay? Yes, ambient light is fine. Just avoid direct sunlight or really strong window exposure. But a normal amount of indirect ambient light is no problem at all, as long as the tank light stays completely off day and night. 
Does the dark start method work without a filter? No, the dark start method relies on water movement and filter media to build up beneficial bacteria. Doing this without a filter provides no real benefit. Can I do the dark start without soil and use gravel or sand? Sure, there's no ammonia to leach, but you'll still benefit from building up your cycle and leaching tannins without the risk of algae from a light. However, I do recommend using bottled beneficial bacteria and providing an ammonia source like a tiny bit of crushed up fish food to make sure that the cycle is well fed. So there you have it. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. It really helps my channel out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys and gals next time.